ceremony. It's Friday, August 2nd on NFL Network at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can only see it here. I think we can all agree this is one of our favorite nights of the year, Shrakes. Awesome, awesome stuff. Great dinner, and then obviously... You have the Saturday stuff. It's all unbelievable, okay? I can't wait for Hall of Fame weekend. We're looking at that footage of Ladaney. We were all there together that year. My first time ever there, and we, there was not a dry eye in the house. Oh. Unbelievable. Will Selva is out in the newsroom in Culver City. Inside Training Camp Live kicks off for nine hours of coverage. What do you got? Yeah, it all starts today here on NFL Network. Wall-to-wall, gavel-to-gavel coverage, if you will. In the news, though, Jaguars quarterback Jalen Ramsey believes Titan safety Kevin Byard is naturally more than deserving of his new contract. Hashtag congrats. Hashtag bag secured is what he tweeted out. This coming from a player, as you saw, showing up in a Brinks truck to training camp. Now, Tennessee agreeing to back up their own equivalent of a bank truck and dumping a five-year extension worth $70 million on Bayard's lap. This deal comes with $31 million in guarantees. Bayard had more picks than anyone over the past two seasons. He's now the highest paid safety in average annual salary at 14.1 mil. But not all the news out of Tennessee was positive. The NFL is suspending Titans left tackle Taylor Luan for their first four games of the season after a failed drug test for a banned substance. In an emotional video posted on social media, Luan was expecting the punishment, saying he didn't knowingly take a supplement prohibited by the league. Well, there's no such cloud of controversy hanging over Brown's training camp. Hello, OBJ. But there is a boundless supply of optimism that they're collecting talent that can fast track them to a Super Bowl. Love these arrivals. A trip to the biggest game of the year should always be the expectation in Cleveland, according to head coach Freddie Kitchens. I want everybody to understand this. Our goal here with the Cleveland Browns, as long as I'm here, will always be to win the Super Bowl. All right? Now, that's the last time I'm going to say that. Just know and make it a given that that's what I believe to my core is to win the Super Bowl. Now, you don't do that by talking about it, and you don't do that by outside expectations. You do that by uh, putting the expectations on how you prepare on a day-in and day-out basis. All right, so that's the last time he's going to say that. The goal there is the Super Bowl. By the way, if you were catching this press conference as we were here, it was great Mm -hmm. Fun to watch Dorsey and Kitchens. They are a comedy routine, complimenting each other, in sync, appearing loose, but they know the expectations are ginormous heading into this training camp. Thank you so much, Will Selva. He's got more uh, out there in the newsroom, and I'd say that's a big deal that he's saying Super Bowl is his goal, right? It's time for some big deal or no big deal, one of our favorite segments on the show. I've got some topics. You guys let me know what you think, and let's get started with those Browns and the expectations, which are through the roof for a team that hasn't made a playoff uh, appearance since when? Oh, two. 2000. Oh, two. And two. Big deal or no big deal that the Browns have the NFL's longest playoff drought, but they have those big expectations, guys. I'll say big deal. I also want to shout out Odell is wearing a Hawkins Phys Ed sweatshirt when he showed up to camp. That is a deep, subtle Stranger Things poll. Very, very cool. I like that. I'm going to say big deal, though. I caught a graphic on the network yesterday that was just the Browns' offensive skill position. And when you see him just laid out like that, it was staggering. I mean, the the players that they have, there's no reason you should not be talking about a Super Bowl with that kind of talent. And I also like the other quote from Kitchens. He's like, We're not really a great team right now. We just have a bunch of great players. But with that roster and that talent, it is a big deal. I remember that 2002 team. I feel like I was in third grade at the time. But it is time. We are ready for some Stranger Things. You're a big Kelly Holcomb guy, Kyle. Who isn't? Who isn't? I'm going to go no big deal. And it's because I think every team should have player Super Bowl expectations. And the past with the Browns, irrelevant to this team right now. That Brown's era of the last decade of the 28 quarterbacks and having Austin Davis under center and you know these receivers that you don't know one week to the next, that's done. They have their core. They have their guys. And Freddie Kitchens and John Dorsey, to Will Silva's point, were a trip yesterday. Mm-hmm. They were a trip. And you know what? It's contagious. You want to like them. You want to root for them. And I think the players will feed off that as well. I'm going to say no big deal. They're a good team. They know they're a good team. Now just go take care of football.
You want to go? I'm going to say it's no big deal just because I think at some point you have to get rid of playoff drafts. When you see what the Red, Sk- or the, the Red Sox did, the, Co- the Cubs, them breaking their streak, you have to let go of the past and understand that you have a good team. So them not being in the playoffs since 2002 should not dictate what they are today. I say it's a big deal because, like you just said, they haven't been to the playoffs. A lot of these guys obviously weren't on that team. But, like, that culture, you have to – you have to build it. You have it's a it's a mindset, and so you hope some of the other players can help lead these guys to to understand because they do have the talent, but it's different between having the talent mm-hmm. and actually letting it translate on the football field. And they've been an organization that haven't won a lot of football games in general. And now you talk about trying to make it to the playoffs. Talk about a Super Bowl for a team that. Didn't win a game two years ago. About 20 minutes ago. Never mind, though, too. They were on 16. (laughs) Now we're talking Super Bowl. It's nuts. Yeah. But then again, those guys weren't there, right? So does Baker use that as motivation? Or is he like, no, 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 I'm going to use that as a bonus and be the savior to the city, but also I'm here. Once I got here, things were great. Yeah, something happens with these buildings, though. Losing buildings, facilities almost get tainted, and it's the same building, and you walk in, and ghosts of years pass, and playoff failures, they do start creeping in. So it's still the Browns, still the same uniform, it's still the same building. Ernest Biner still? No, no, no. There's been Jose th- Mesa. That's exactly right. <laughs> Still the Browns, so we'll see if they can overcome that. Well said. Do you want to go to your old team and talk about that? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, to Washington we go. They picked up a veteran quarterback named Case Keenum this offseason. They also drafted a guy at 15 overall in Nashville named Dwayne Haskins. But head coach Jay Gruden has yet to commit to a starter, and here's what he had to say about the competition of Bruin. <clears throat> It's the uh, same spot. You know, this is just part of the process, really, uh, for me to make a determination on a starting quarterback after mini camp or training or mandatory camp is, is kind of foolish. So let these guys continue to play and uh, see which one continues to improve, which one's most consistent um, throughout the training camp and preseason. We'll go from there. All right, Triggs, I'm sending this one right to you. Big deal or no big deal that Dwayne Haskins is the only rookie in a quarterback competition around the league right now? Yeah, I'm going to say big deal. We know that Kyler Murray is the guy. He was given that the second he was drafted first overall. We know that Daniel Jones, for now, is not the guy, and Drew Locke is going to wait too. But let's see someone compete for that gig, and we'll know if Dwayne Haskins is the real deal after this month. We'll know if that locker room believes in him because the competition is Case Keenum and eventually Colt McCoy when he's fully healthy. And we've seen those guys for a decade in the league. We know exactly what we're getting. If Haskins doesn't beat them out for the job, it tells me he wasn't ready after just one year of college and wasn't ready to take them in. The Redskins want him to be the guy, trust me. Mm. But if he's not ready, they have two very good security blankets. It's a big deal right now, I think so. I'm going to say big deal, too. I would be very careful if I was coaches in this era being so emphatic about the rookie is not going to play. We had Jordan Palmer sitting here earlier this week, this quarterback guru, talking about how advanced and exotic the college game is getting, how much better these quarterbacks are coming out. I look at someone like Drew Locke. Do we know for a fact that Joe Flacco, who's never done bubkiss for the Broncos and hasn't played well in four or five years, is just going to be the guy? Do you want to be closed-minded to maybe a really talented live arm out of college maybe wouldn't have a better shot? Because we saw it last year in Cleveland when Tyrod Taylor was going to make Baker wait, and it was the biggest mistake of the season. Just be careful. I just want a little open-mindedness to these guys because they aren't the same rookies coming out. I'm going to say no big deal. Um, You know, at every position, there's going to be a lot of position battles. You know, the quarterback position tends to get the most attention. But, you know, at the end of the day, especially in training camp, that's that's when you go out there and you work and you grind. And so I'm excited for this true, true quarterback competition. I think they do have – Three good, good, good candidates who can go out there and, and sling this ball around. Obviously, I'm leaning on the young guy because I know at some point it's going to be his team, mm-hmm. and I want to see him go ahead and mature and learn. You talk about, you know, these uh, Jordan saying that these young guys come in just, just with, with with a lot better understanding of the offense. The offenses aren't the problem that's going to trick these guys. It's what the defenses try to do to them. And so, the quicker you can get a guy out there on the field learning and understanding what defenses are trying to do, like Pat Mahomes, him waiting a year and watching Alex yeah. Smith operate that offense mm-hmm. and see defenses and go in to watch film prepared him for year two. Now I'm looking at him in year three. I know Pat Mahomes is going to kill it, so I want Dwayne Haskins to win this job and go out there and and continue to get better in his craft. But that's why 
It's a big deal, just because of what you said earlier on in your argument, that you are so here for this quarterback competition. I've been talking about this all summer. This is a pure QB competition that's going on, the only one in the league. This is going to be the most exciting thing to me in the entire preseason. So for me, it's a big deal as an NFL fan to see the open-mindedness of a coach yeah, in wanting to have the best player start week one. D'Angelo, you've never here seen a Redskins it. quarterback competition in your days. So oh, oh, baby. <laughs> one too many. That's right, man. <laughs> we got a lot of That's for sure. A little scar tissue there. Yeah. Uh, our continuous coverage of training camp continues throughout the day. Odell Beckham Jr. is joining our Inside Training Camp Live crew today. You can catch all of the action at 1 p.m. Eastern and right here on NFL Network. Dogs got to eat. Love it. Can't wait for all of that. Nine hours of Inside Training Camp Live. You'll follow us right here on Good Morning Football. And when we get back, what's the pitch count for this guy mean for the Panthers? Mm-hmm. It means good.